Hi, we're going to be looking at gas-powered cycles, more specifically jet engines. The problem statement we have is that a jet aircraft is flying at a speed of 280 meters per second at an altitude where the pressure is 55 kPa and the temperature is minus 18 degrees C. We're then told the compressor pressure ratio is 14 and the maximal temperature at the inlet of the turbine is 1450 Kelvin. At the inlet of the jet engine, a diffuser increases the pressure and brings the relative air velocity relative to the aircraft to zero. They want us to determine the temperature and pressure at the inlet of the compressor and the exit velocity. First thing we draw, draw is our TS diagram. This is going to look kind of familiar to our Brayton cycles, but this here is the inlet. Point one here is before the compressor, point two is before the combustor, point three is before the turbine, right here is before the nozzle, and this here would be the exit point five. If I draw this out, we have a diffuser that goes to our compressor. This here is attached to our turbine. We go into our combustion chamber, and then we go through a nozzle. So we can say this is the inlet. This would be point one. This would be point two, point three. This here would be point four, and this point five. What's been given in this problem? They tell us that the velocity is, or the velocity of the aircraft is 280 meters per second. So that means that the Velocity at the inlet, V in, is 280 meters per second. They go on to tell us that at the altitude it's flying at, it has a pressure of 55 kPa and a temperature of minus 18 degrees C. That tells us that the pressure in is 55 kPa and the temperature in is 255 Kelvin. They then go on to say that the compressor pressure ratio is 14. That means that the pressure at 2 over the pressure at 1 is equal to 14. They then say that the uh, diffuser brings the relative velocity to 0. So that means that the velocity at point 1 is equal to 0. And they want us to find the pressure at point 1, the temperature at point 1, and the velocity at the exit, which we called point 5. If we consider our diffuser to be an isentropic diffuser and that no energy is lost, we can say that the specific heat capacity times the temperature at point 1 plus 1 over 2, the velocity at point 1 squared, is going to be equal to the specific heat capacity times the temperature at the inlet plus 1 over 2 times the velocity at the inlet squared. We know that the velocity at point 1 is equal to 0, so we can rearrange this as T1 is equal to the temperature at the inlet plus 1 over 2 the velocity at the inlet squared divided by Cp. What we have to be careful here is that the Cp we're going to use is for air, and it's in kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, whereas when we're using the energy from velocity, we get an answer in joules per kilogram. Joules per kilogram. So we need to rearrange our, um, we need to bring our units to the same level. So we can say that T1 is going to be equal to 255 plus 1 over 2 times 280 squared divided by 1.004 times 1 over 1,000. This gives us a temperature at point 1 to be equal to 294.04 Kelvin. What this equation says is that the energy from the temperature plus the energy from the velocity is going to be equal to the energy from the temperature plus the energy from the velocity through our diffuser. Now, from the inlet to point 1, we said it was an isentropic process, so we can use the isentropic relations. We can say that the pressure at point 1 over the pressure at the inlet is going to be equal to the temperature at point 1 over the temperature at the inlet to the K over K minus 1. This gives us that the pressure at point 1 is equal to the pressure at the inlet times the temperature at point 1 divided by the temperature at the inlet to the power of K over K minus 1. If we throw some numbers in here, we get that P1 is equal to 55 times 294.04 divided by 
255 to the power of 1.4 divided by 1.4 minus 1. And this gives us a pressure at the inlet of the compressor of 90.56 kPa. Same way we said we had an isentropic diffuser with no energy loss, we're going to say we have an isentropic nozzle with no energy loss. That means that we can say that the specific heat capacity times the temperature at 0.4 before the nozzle plus 1 over 2 times the velocity at 0.4 squared is going to be equal to the specific heat capacity times the temperature at 0.5 plus 1 over 2 the velocity at 0.5 squared. What we're going to do is we're going to say that the velocity at 0.4 is approximately equal to 0 and we're going to rearrange and solve for velocity at 0.5. We get that the velocity at 0.5 is going to be equal to the square root of 2 times the specific heat capacity times the temperature at 0.4 minus the temperature at 0.5. But we don't have the temperature at 0.4 or the temperature at 0.5, so we're going to need to solve for these ones. T4 is equal to and T5 is equal to. Jet engines aren't very efficient. The main objective is to create the thrust. So we can say that the work of the compressor is equal to the work of the turbine. That means that the change in enthalpy from 1 to 2 is equal to the change in enthalpy from 1 to 4. So we say Cp T2 minus T1 is equal to Cp T3 minus T4. And this will allow us to solve for T4, but we need to find T2 first. We know that from 1 to 2 we have an isentropic process. So we say the temperature at 2 divided by the temperature at 1 is equal to the pressure at 2 divided by the pressure at 1 to the power of k minus 1 over k. We can rearrange, and we know that P2 over P1 is our compressor compression ratio. So we can say that T2 is equal to T1, our pressure ratio, the k minus 1 over k. We get that T2 is equal to 294.04 to the times 14 to the 1.4 minus 1 over 1.4 and this gives us a temperature of 624.99 Kelvin. Now with this information if we re rearrange for T4 we get that T4 is equal to T3 plus T1 minus T2 and T3 I hadn't written it earlier but it's written here now is equal to the maximal temperature, which is 1,450 Kelvin. So we have 1,450 plus our T1, which is 294.04, minus the temperature T2 we just solved for, 624.99. This is all in Kelvin. And this gives us a temperature T4 equal to 1,119.05 Kelvin. We know that from 4 to 5 we have an isentropic process, but we need to find something that relates the two. And we're going to relate them through pressure. So we know that the pressure at 0.5 is at the outlet, at the exit, so it's going to be 55 kPa. We just need to find the pressure at 0.4. We also know that from 3 to 4 we have an isentropic process. So we can relate that the pressure at 0.4 over the pressure at 0.3 is going to be equal to the temperature at 0.4 divided by the temperature at 0.3 to the power of k divided by k minus 1. We can rearrange this and say that the pressure at 4 is equal to the pressure at 3, t4 over t3, k divided by k minus 1. The only thing we need is the pressure at 0.3. We can say that the pressure at 0.3 is equal to the pressure at 0.2 is equal to the pressure ratio from 1 to 2 times the pressure at 0.1. This gives us 14 times 90.56, which gives us a pressure at 0.3 of 1,267.84 kPa. We're now ready to solve for the pressure at 0.4, so we can say that P4 is equal to 1,267.84 times 1,119.05 divided by 1,450 to the 1.4 divided by 1.4 minus 1. This gives us a pressure at 0.4 of 600, sorry, 511.98 kPa. Now, with this information, we can say that the temperature at 0.5 divided by the temperature at 0.4 is equal to the pressure at 0.5 
divided by the pressure at point 4 to the power of k minus 1 over k. From this, we get that the temperature at point 5 is equal to the temperature at point 4, which was 1,119.05, times the pressure at point 5, which is 55 kPa, divided by the pressure at point 4, which we said was 511.98 kPa, to the power of 1.4 minus 1, divided by 1.4. We get that the temperature at point 5 is equal to 591.6 Kelvin. We then said that the velocity at point 5 was equal to the square root of 2 times Cp, which is 1.004, times the change in temperature from 4 to 5, so 1,119.05 minus 591.6. Now, this is in kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, so we need to bring it to joules per kilogram Kelvin, so we multiply by 1,000, square root everything, and this gives us a velocity at 0.5 to be equal to 1,029.14 meters per second.